So in this video, we're going to do a PN junction example. Uh, and so the problem is going to be this. Uh, calculate uh, Xn, or the depletion width on the N side, Xp, depletion width on the P side, uh, the built-in potential VBI, and the maximum electric field strength uh, for a PN junction of silicon uh, at the temperature is equal to 300 degrees Kelvin. And we're going to say that the doping on the N side, uh, ND is 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed. And the doping on the P side, the accepted doping is 2 times 10 to the 17 uh, per centimeter cubed. Well, we can start off, uh, start, of this, start off this problem fairly easily. Uh, we know we have just an equation that relates VBI and the doping concentration. So that's that's where we'll start. Uh, we know that it's just equal to the thermal voltage times the natural log of the doping on the P side times the doping on the N side uh, divided by the intrinsic doping of silicon squared. And if we plug in all those numbers, uh, I highly recommend that you memorize these constants. And normally I don't like memorization, uh, but you're gonna be using these so much that I would recommend that you do. Uh, phi T is uh, approximately 25.9 millivolts if you're if you want three digits of precision, or 26 millivolts if you only want two. Generally, these kind of uh, these kind of equations or these kind of problems ask for more digits of precision. So I tend to lean towards the 25.9. Um, and and I squared remember is 1.5 times 10 to the 10 uh, per centimeter cubed. And remember, Ni is a function of temperature. Uh, it's a function of temperature to the three halves and an e to the minus one over temperature. So always keep that in the back of your head. Uh, if the temperature is at a temperature that's not 300 Kelvin, you do need to calculate the carrier concentration at that temperature. And so if you plug in all the numbers, you'll get uh, that the built-in potential is 0.772 volts. And does that seem reasonable? Well, yeah, we know that the turn on voltage of a diode is presumed to be about 0.7 volts. And we've probably done a couple of these problems before. So this, this seems like a reasonable answer. It's not like 10 kilovolts, for example, which would obviously be ridiculous. And now if we want to calculate Xn, or the depletion region on the N side, uh, we just Let's just draw out our diode real quick to make sure we're doing everything correctly. Uh, so we know that on the P side, we've got acceptors, which form a negative charge on the side of the depletion region. On the N side, we've got donors, which form a positive charge on the side of the depletion region, on the, on the right-hand side of the depletion region. And we know we've got a certain built-in potential. We've got a certain width xp and a certain width uh, xn. And we previously derived a formula for xn and xp, uh, which I'm just going to rewrite here. Uh, we got that it's equal to 2 times the permittivity of silicon uh, times the built-in potential divided by the electronic charge times the doping on the n side, uh, so nd, uh, times 1 plus ND over NA, or the doping on the P side. And this formula was just, remember, derived from Gauss's law, and it involved a double integral, which is where this square root came from, because the XN ended up being squared. Um, and remember that the higher the doping is on the N side, the lower or the, the smaller the depletion region will be on the, on the N side. So if we just, each of these are just numbers. We have VBI. Uh, we have Na, we have Nd, we have Q. Um, plugging everything in, uh, the, the tricky part here is to plug in things with the appropriate units. So we're expecting the answer to be in terms, uh, in units of length. So if we actually write out all of the, all of the constants, uh, we have 2 times the permittivity of silicon, uh, which is 11.7, which is the relative permittivity times 8.854 times 10 to the minus 14 uh, farads per centimeter. 
So this is where most people get tripped up is they forget to convert uh, things, they forget to convert units appropriately, and then they end up off by a factor of 100 or a factor of 10, uh, multiplied by VBI, which is 0.772 volts. And then divide that by Q or the electronic charge, uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, uh, times ND, which is, uh, what did we say? I believe it was 10 to the 16, yeah, 10 to the 16, times 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed, times one plus uh, 10 to the 16 per centimeter cubed over two times 10 to the 17 per centimeter cubed. And so it's it, it might be a little tricky to work out the units, uh, but you'll start to realize that some common um, some common simplifications might emerge for, for reasons of unit cancellation. So we know that the charge on a capacitor Q is just equal to the capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor. Uh, well, we've got units of charge on the bottom C, and we've got a units of volts here and units of capacitance here. So a farad times a volt uh, is a coulomb. And then the coulomb cancels with the coulomb and we're left with, on the bottom, uh, all told, uh, if we, I'm, I'm just gonna draw or write out the, uh, the final value that we get, uh, we'll get 3.09, well, that's not a three, uh, 3.09 uh, times 10 to the minus five. And that's in units of, uh, let's figure that out. Well, we had the Coulombs cancel, but we've still got an inverse centimeters on the top and uh, cubic inverse centimeters on the bottom. Uh, and so we can move this one up top to give us uh, inverse centimeters times centimeters to the three. And that's just square root of centimeters squared, which is centimeters. So this answer is gonna be in three, it's 3.09 times 10 to the minus five centimeters. And if it makes you uncomfortable to have scientific notation mixed with centimeters, uh, if you prefer the answer in microns, uh, then you'll just multiply by multiply this answer first to convert to meters uh, by 10 to the minus two. So that would be 3.09 times 10 to the minus seven meters, which is just 0 0.309 microns. And so this is generally what we're gonna give our final answer as, although it is useful to keep around uh, this 3.09 times 10 to the minus five centimeters, because if you're gonna be using it in a subsequent calculation, it's nice to keep everything in terms of centimeters. Okay, so that was Xn. Uh, so now how about Xp? Well, we could go through this uh, whole formula again, uh, or we could remember conservation of charge. We could remember the model that we're using. Remember the model that we're using says that we've got a certain, uh, on the P side, we've got a certain number of negative charged ions here and a certain number of positive charged ions on the N side. And we know that the total number of charged ions on each side has to be the same. So XP multiplied by the concentration of ions NA uh, must equal XN, the depletion width on the N side, uh, times the concentration of donor ions and D. And so that gives us a super simple formula for XP in terms of XN. Uh, it's just XN times ND over an A. Uh, and I recommend you remember the formula as, as this, or even better, remember the underlying model and be able to very quickly arrive at the formula. And so if we plug the numbers in here, we know we won't have any units trouble because the units on the top and the bottom are the same and Xn has its own units. Uh, we'll end up with 1.54 uh, times 10 to the minus six. And that's also in units of centimeters. So if we convert that into microns, it's just 0.0154 uh, microns. And you might ask, well, why aren't you converting it into nanometers instead of microns, because this is a little awkward. Uh, the reason is, uh, th there really is no good reason. You could just as well convert this into, um, 
into nanometers, both of these into nanometers. In fact, I usually do. But uh, in terms of the the textbook and what your what your coursework will likely involve, uh, you'll likely be asked for the answer in terms of microns, partly for historical reasons, partly because it's a pretty versatile unit that you can use a great majority of the time. So you get more of an intuitive feel for it. And so lastly, we want to calculate the electric field um, E, or the maximum electric field E max. And we just want its magnitudes. We don't really care about its direction. Uh, well, again, if we remember the model that we're using, that we've got a certain negative charge here on the P side and a certain positive charge here on the N side, minus Q and plus Q, Remember that we could get the electric field just from Gauss's law. Um, remember in the previous video, we said that all we need to do is integrate uh, the charge density divided by the permittivity of silicon um, with respect to the X direction. And to get to this point uh, where the electric field is maximum, because initially it'll decrease and then the positive charge will cause it to increase again. And oh, sorry, that, that should be that should end at the end of the depletion region. Uh, we can either integrate on the P side or the N side because we're going to get the same answer either way. And since we're just integrating a, a constant, we're just integrating a, a constant charge density, uh, we'll just end up with rho over epsilon silicon. Uh, and let's say we're we're going to do this on the P side. So rho over epsilon silicon times XP. And rho, the charge density on the P side, is just Q times Na, because that's the doping concentration. So that's just equal to Q times Na uh, divided by epsilon silicon times Xp. And the reason I'm going through this um, more fundamentals approach, where these formulas come from, is it's very uh, easy to memorize a set of equations, but you'll forget them very quickly. Uh, if instead you try to memorize ways of getting to equations and much more general ways of getting to equations, then you'll never need to remember uh, lists of equations. You'll only need to remember one or two equations, and then you can quickly get all the equations that you need in not a very long time at all. So if we just uh, worry about the units for a second, uh, and then we plug things in, we have XP in units of centimeters as before. Uh, we have Na in units of centimeters and, or inverse cubic centimeters rather, and epsilon silicon, make sure you have it in units of farads per centimeter. Uh, and so assuming you, you plugged in the units all correctly, uh, and this is in units of uh, coulombs. So assuming that you plugged in all the units correctly, you'll get an answer of uh, 47,000 uh, 700 volts per centimeter. So that's the uh, ma maximum electric field strength. And we, if we want to know the direction it's pointing, uh, we just know that it's pointing from the positive charges to the negative charges. But the magnitude is just 47,700 uh, volts per centimeter. And if we, again, if you wanted, you could convert that to volts per micron, volts per meter, whatever you wanted. Generally, we like to put um, quantities in terms of the most useful units, the most kind of uh, the units that make the most sense for whatever application you're doing. So if you're measuring the electric field over a very tiny distance, you might be interested in microns. But if you're measuring it over a larger distance, you might be interested in centimeters. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.